All right, I've been triggered. I'm sure most of you who watch my channel know who Dale Vince is. If you don't, maybe you want to quickly Google him. I know in the past it's a bit controversial. Some people think he's a genius. Some people think he's a madman. He's one of those figures that's quite polarizing. But recently he's really been rubbing me up the wrong way with his little campaign of misinformation or disinformation about heat pumps. These are some of the things that he shared across all his social media platforms. He owns the one of the energy companies, Ecotricity. He's been trying to do a lot of good things in the green sector. But all of a sudden he's saying that heat pumps aren't the solution and actually heat pumps bring more problems than solutions. And I think this is all a load of rubbish. So I just want to walk through some of his claims, debunk them because it's the same old misinformation we hear over and over and over again, typically from gas and oil lobbies. And then maybe we'll come to a conclusion of why he's spreading this stuff. So he starts with an emotive leading argument that's trying to appeal to a certain audience. He's clearly not trying to appeal to conservative um, right-leaning voters. He's trying to go against that narrative and he's trying to pin this as, oh, the heat pumps are synonymous with Boris Johnson for some reason. And trying to tie it together with other things that might be quite emotive to certain types of people and certain demographics and you know it's always flawed when someone starts an argument not with any data not with really any uh, logical reason but just an emotive statement like heat pumps of Boris Johnson's idea he also did these bad things that you might not like anyway this is his first set of claims. It's the same old stuff we've seen so many times. Heat pumps work in Norway, so why not in Britain? Heat pumps make lower temperature water than gas boilers. Okay, wrong. My heat pump can heat the water up to 70 degrees if I want it to, just like a heat pump. So stop selling that rubbish. They work in Nordic countries because they have well-insulated homes and modern heating systems. Wrong. Well, that's not necessarily wrong, actually, but you're trying to you're trying to uh, put a contrast between us and Norway and saying their houses are better insulated. That may be correct, but that is completely irrelevant to heat pumps. That means that for the same size house in UK, we'd need more power from our boiler or more power from our heat pump. So it's nothing to do with the heat source. It's nothing to do with heat pumps. That is just that leaky less insulated houses require more heat energy to keep them warm they have a higher heat loss we know all about this it's just basic physics it's nothing to do with the uk being unsuitable and for people who say that you need to insulate before you have a heat pump that's not true either heat pumps do work more efficiently at lower flow temperatures but the way to drive up efficiency is to have large emitters have a large outlet for all that heat energy to go out so that could be underfloor heating or it could be radiators and if you don't have very good insulation then you need very large radiators if you want very small radiators then you have to have very good insulation but you don't necessarily have to have large insulation and extra you know air tightness anyway i'm laboring this point too much we all know this anyway yeah, um, and talking about modern heating systems and we still use old style radiators. Can someone in the Nordic countries please inform me about these new fandangled radiators that you've got over there? I'd love to know. Um, the next question, the next point he makes is about heat pumps being expensive. And he says it costs up to £15,000 to currently install heat pumps. The cost of insulating your home and upgrading your heat system isn't included in this cost with the current performance of heat pumps heating bills could rise by 30 percent so he's making roughly three different claims there but he says it costs up to fifteen thousand pounds once again this is fear mongering for most people you won't pay anywhere near that the average cost for 2023 was twelve thousand three hundred sixty eight you take off the seven and a half grand the average cost that people paid last year 4,868 and from what I understand this year we're on track to probably reduce that average cost down 
by 1,000 to 1,500 pounds. I think that was mostly because of Octopus Energy and their aggressive pricing. Um, the system cost doesn't include upgrading the heating system. Well, that's absolute nonsense. That's absolute rubbish. The figure at the top does include radiator upgrades, pipework upgrades, cylinder upgrades, the whole associated stuff. So it's just absolute garbage that you put that in there. The 30% rise in your energy cost. Well, you people that are watching have got heat pumps. I've got a heat pump. I know that my heating bills have gone down dramatically since I've had it. And even if you don't factor in smart tariffs, as long as your system is running efficiently, you are still going to save money compared to an average set up boiler of 80 85 percent efficiency on off terrible controls etc etc um let's not even factor in tariffs like octopus cozy ovo heat pump plus octopus agile there's so many ways that you can make a heat pump run cheaper or more efficiently and of course if you're in the if you're um if you have the luxury of home storage battery then of course it's another another issue as well so it's just the same old misinformation anyway the next claims heat pumps need more electricity if every home had a heat pump based on current performance we would need a 130 percent increase in green electricity made by the wind and the sun with the best possible performance we would still need a 100 increase britain does not have enough renewable projects to power heat pumps sustainably so he's talking about we need to double the capacity that we have here in our grid and that's rubbish uh that's been debunked so many times and we could go through and look at the actual figures of it but what you need to know broadly is there are three main points here okay um heat pumps they generally they heat low and slow so it's not a big surge on the grid it's not a massive difficult draw most heat pumps tick away at five six seven hundred watts and they'll stay on for an hour and then they'll be off for half an hour and then they'll go back on that is not a huge massive surge that the grid struggles with actually ev chargers are a much bigger challenge for the grid because you plug in, you turn it on, and that's seven and a half kilowatts. That's more than 10 times the power that your heat pump's consuming. And depending on the miles, you might need that every, for four, five, six hours every night. Anyway, uh, we've got loads of projects coming online. So your homework is to go and Google that and go and look at the renewable energy projects that are downstream. And you'll see that we've got more than enough to cover demand. And if we had more grid level storage or even local level storage, it would be even better. And we'd cover the the uh, the power in of the heat pumps so easily. His 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 uh, claims and statements are so outdated because the grid has been decarbonizing at such a, a, an amazing pace that these arguments are just not valid anymore. So the question is, why is he lying about this stuff? Is he knowingly trying to deceive people or is he just ignorant? We're not sure. Um, but what we can say is that he has a lot of money invested in biogas through the AD process and especially using agriculture and trying to... He, he doesn't even talk about actual agricultural waste product. His way is to take over farmland, grow grass, let the grass basically decompose, decompose and then extract all of the methane from that so the biomethane from grass he's not interested in using any waste products he's not interested in using food waste in using animal waste human waste sewage waste anything like that um, he says none of that should be used because that's against his vegan principles and he's entitled to that that's fair but he wants to just grow grass so let's look at the reality of the alternative he's putting forward and that he's invested a huge amount of money and his business in so this is the top five reasons why i think this is greenwashing and it's become top six reasons you still need to burn this biomethane and it releases co2 into the atmosphere it still requires further refinement after you see this la this process here and you see the outlet pipe past there it still needs further refinement to be burnt in our boilers and stuff like that 
Um, it still needs to be transported inefficiently and that typically at the moment means diesel uh, tractors work in the fields it still means diesel transportation trucks lorries etc this is still a methane product so it still leaks during the whole process of production transport it even leaks in our homes there's not enough land to produce what we need for our needs and it's not financial financially viable for farmers Go and ask farmers about how much they can sell a, a field or an acre's worth or a hectare's worth of grass and they will just laugh at you. Hopefully there's some farmers watching this and they can let me know in the comments. So Ecotricity, he, he's had a few videos about this, trying to promote this uh, approach. He seems to be a one-man band because it doesn't seem like there's anyone else that agrees with him that AD is the way forward on gas generation or even using that gas to then power gas turbines to power electricity, another step in the, the process. But his claims are that 4,000 acres can supply 4,000 homes. That means that 30 million homes will be needed for 30 million acres. But he then goes on to say that 5,000 of bio, these biogas plants will be needed around the UK. If you do your numbers check, none of this stacks up. If you want to fact check it, go for it. I was going round and round in circles on the Ecotricity website, Wikipedia articles, fully charged videos, their YouTube channel. I spent too much time, but none of his figures add up and they're not consistent. And he's been doing, he's been at this for quite a long time. I think the plans actually started in 2009. But the first one that actually got the go ahead and was going to be built was right by me in 2015, Sparsholt College, just up the road in Winchester. It was cancelled after lots of backwards and forwards. Um, one of the there were lots of planning hiccups but there were also financial hiccups that this the sums didn't quite add up but one of these plants actually went live last year so we've got a little test case now to see if this is plausible or not and we know that now he's doubling down and he's saying this is the only way forward so what this means from his claims anyway is that 94 percent of the land mass of england would be needed to produce enough of what we need for the whole of the UK. That also means um, that we would have to forfeit a lot of the stuff that's already here because this is just for England. 10% of it is already built on, 37% of it is green belt, 10% of it is woodland, 8% of it is mountainous or rivers, so unsuitable for grazing in any way and collecting the grass for this whole gas turbine mill, no, gas milling is what he likes to call it, um, biogas plants. Where are we going to grow our food? Where are we going to have livestock? What, what are we going to do with all of our land if we need to give up 94% of it to produce enough of this this uh, grass to... for? Ah, it's just... It's baffling. So by contrast, if we covered 1% of our land with solar panels, we would be able to generate everything that we need for our current electricity demands and also our future electricity demands. That's a big caveat if we could store all of the energy produced by that much solar. Once again, 10% of the land is already built on. So roughly speaking, one in 10 properties being covered by solar will meet our energy needs, which is quite fascinating. But when you start to think of not just residential properties, you start thinking of all the commercial industrial scale stuff then it starts to add up quite quickly even better wind turbines that if you're talking about the square meter of the square meterage of the base of a wind turbine and how much energy it produces uh, is is very efficient it's got a very good ratio especially when you contrast it to the to the bio methane gas plants that they're talking about the conclusion is that heat pumps are great we can debunk his his uh, criticism all we like um, and we can look at the alternative. But his alternative is not a good one. It's not financially viable. It's not scalable. And it's still a much worse pollution, polluting uh, method of doing things. So on all cases, it doesn't stack up. We need to say no to deceptive practices, smoke and mirrors for the last nearly 15 years of, I th 
I I think greenwashing, and I know this is bold claim, bold statement, but I think we need to follow the money here. I think that Dale has been left behind, and he should have jumped on the bandwagon more with wind power and solar panel, panel slow, solar power. We can see now, or in conjunction with large sta- scale energy storage. We can see that those are the future. They are the most efficient ways for us to generate our power. And using valuable land space that we need for normal agriculture and trying to convert all of that into growing grass so that we can then go through this whole convoluted process of refining and collecting and transporting and everything else. It's not an efficient way to work. And we can debunk that in so many ways. The numbers don't stack up. I've ranted on enough. I've been triggered. and But I hope that this has been useful to you in some way. As a reminder, 99% of you won't like this video. You won't leave a comment. And if you've made it this far, you really should be doing one of those things. Um, a like costs you nothing. And if you like some of this content and you don't mind my ranting then over 96 percent of my viewers are still not even subscribed to the channel so you might want to consider a subscription thank you very much for your time you'll see me on another one in the future